we're going to work on basically doing conditioning work. We're not going to do a crazy extensive thing. There will be a lot of up and down and all around, but hopefully we're going to look at the big muscle groups that, you know, if you're hiking, Christina apparently is a very avid hiker and everything she was talking about while she was doing this class. I was like, yeah, I'm not doing all that. Um, she sounded like she was one of those people that was climbing like 14 years on the regular. So she was talking about how vigorous it is. And I'm like, when I take a what? a hike. It is very casual. It might take me four hours to do something that'll take somebody else an hour. Like I'm like not doing all that. So we're going to do a lot of the things that she does pre and post hiking these mountains so that we can feel just kind of a sense of equanimity within the body. That all being said, as I've already mentioned, we'll need two blocks, a ball, a blanket, and a strap. Now that we all have that, let's go ahead and sit tall in our seat. And you can sit on a block, you can sit on a blanket, you can sit on whatever you want, but you'll just sit super tall. And I want you to either soften the gaze or close the eyes. You might start by removing any flesh from underneath your sit bones, what so feels like your butt's pretty evenly rooted on whatever you're seated upon. And then I want you to just notice what it feels like to root down through the pelvis and then yet grow up through the spine, almost like you're stacking every single vertebra on top of each other, like a Jenga tower or something. Now, as you build your awareness up the spine, notice if you can just broaden through the collarbones, broaden through the chest, release any tension in the hands or in the mouth. And if you need to wiggle the shoulders a little bit or circle the head a little bit, by all means do that. But we're trying to find where your starting point is. And once you feel like you've gotten any wiggles out, go ahead and bring yourself to stillness. Notice if you can relax some more tension around the mouth, around the root of your tongue and jaw. Allow the eyelids to become heavy. Allow the eyes to rest in the sockets. And then you just take three or four breaths here and just notice what your baseline is. Do you notice if there's some tension along one side of your back versus the other? Does it go up in a diagonal? Does it straight up and down? Does it go horizontally? Just notice what's going on there. Notice if there's any unnecessary clenching around the hands around the muscles in the mouth. And you'll just take three more breath cycles here on your own. At the end of your next exhalation, let's go ahead and draw our hands to heart center on Julie Mudra. Press the palms into each other, receive the weight of your thumbs into your chest, and then lightly press your sternum into your thumbs. Gently exhale all the breath from your mouth, and then take a big inhalation. Audible exhale. Inhale for OM. Join if you'd like. Mm. Soften your chin towards your chest. Allow the eyes to flutter open. Release your hands and bring the head up to vertical. All right, so we're going to start standing. So go ahead and stand tall at the top of your space. <clears throat> and because we're trying to just get back to a sense of equanimity, because I think it's kind of important in all aspects of our life, we're just gonna start standing at the top of your space and I want you to stand with your feet hip distance apart. And I'm gonna stand just behind my mat so you can see my whole body. And so just notice, maybe you'll soften the gaze or close the eyes again, how the weight feels distributed in the feet. Notice if there's any tension across the front of your hips, sort of where the hips crease. Notice if you feel any tension on the backs of the legs, what's going on in the arms and in the hands. And this is just our first imprint. So whatever you notice is great. And that's just our starting point. Now, if the eyes are closed, go ahead and open the eyes. 
walk your big toes to touch. So bring your whole legs together and see if you can bring the inner edges of your feet. So big toes touch, depending upon how your feet are oriented, you might have a little bit of space between your heels, that's okay. Now start to slide your hands down towards your knees and you'll start to bend your knees and pop a squat. So you're in this weird thing where your knees are bent, your butt sticking back. It's kind of like you're talking to a cute little dog in front of you and you're like, hi, little dog. And you want to make sure that as you're doing this, your spine is as straight as possible. And you're in this weird utkatasana shape. So we're seeing if we can let our knees go forward over our ankles, our butt is sort of leaning back. And then I want you to press your inner knees towards each other. The weight is still in your arms and you're pushing down into your big toes. Nice job. Next inhale, go ahead and stand up. Again, notice how it feels to have the weight in your feet. Your feet are now together, so it's more narrow, and you might notice that that differs in terms of how you feel in terms of balance. Cool, let's try that again. So let's go ahead and bend our knees, sliding our hands down our thighs. And this time I want you to see how close you can get your butt towards a 90 degree angle. So really bending your knees, sticking your butt back behind you. So bend your knees even more, Sandy, stick your butt back even more. There we go, fantastic. Keep your arms straight. We're gonna transfer our weight to our right leg. Pull your left knee up to your chest as you come to stand. And you can bring your hands on the front of your left shin. You might circle your left ankle, but just notice what this feels like. Okay, then we'll gently release that. Draw the left foot back down. Make sure your big toes are touching, inner edges are the feet are pretty much parallel. Hands slide down the thighs, butt sits back, sit in your Utkatasana shape once again. And again, we're seeing how long we can make our low back. And then you'll shift the weight to the left. The right leg will come towards your chest. Your hands will come to the front of your right shin and you draw the knee pretty close to your armpit. Maybe you circle that ankle, maybe you don't, but you just notice, okay. Awesome sauce, let's go ahead and release that. Draw the feet back down to touch. Big toes touching again, really pay attention to that. Slide the hands down the knees, sit your butt back again. Cool, so one of the things to know about Christina Sell is she is queen of repetition. She likes making you do things an inordinate amount of time. So we're gonna do that. This next time, shift the weight to the right. The hands go down, the left leg comes up without the arms. And you just feel how that feels. Okay, go ahead and lower the left foot down. Make sure the big toes touch. There's space between the heels. Bend your knees, sit your butt back. Hands slide down towards the thighs. Awesome sauce. And then shift the weight to the left. Draw the right leg up. Reach the arms down. Fantastic. Okay, now you're going to lower that foot down. You guys get to do two more sets all on your own. And ideally, we're trying to do it without our hands so we can engage our core. We find the stability that's helping in our supporting leg. And then every time you lower the feet, again, make sure you're in that position where your feet are in what is typically called Tadasana, where the legs are activated. And we're trying to work pretty slowly. All right, so this is our last set. And if you've done more than I have, that's fantastic. If you've not, that's fantastic too. Fantastic. So we'll say that was our last one. Go ahead and lower your feet down if you haven't, and then separate your feet back to hip distance apart. And then just notice what it feels like now here. How does the feet, how do the feet feel? How do your hips feel? How do the legs feel? How does your sense of balance feel? Fantastic. All right. Go ahead and grab your strap. And you're going to unroll your strap all the way. I'm going to cheat and drink some water. Okay. <clears throat> now, once you have your strap, you'll bring one end of your strap into one hand. And then the other end of the strap will come into the other hand, but we're gonna bring the strap behind us. And we wanna make sure that we're drawing it underneath the bottom tips of our shoulder blades. So it generally helps if you just have the strap in one hand and then pull that strap long 
so that you can make sure it stays in contact with the backs of your shoulder blades. Yep, fantastic, cool. Now with your feet hip distance apart, I want you to pull on the strap and you'll notice that if you pull the strap forward, almost like little zombie arms, you can draw your front ribs straight back. And as you pull your front ribs straight back and you push back into your strap, you can start to pull the strap forward with your hands. Now over the next five to 10 breaths, you choose this for you, you're gonna pull the strap forward and then up. But as you keep going forward and then up, you keep drawing your front ribs into the back of the body, the back of the body into the strap. You are rooting down through your feet, you're reaching up and forward through your hands. You're softening any unnecessary tension across your shoulders. And oh yeah, you're breathing. And so you will take two more breath cycles here, really breathing into the back of the body, into the strap, pulling the strap forward and reaching the arms forward and up. On your next exhalation, gently lower the arms down. You might drop the strap just for a moment and then just notice what you notice. How does it feel? How are you breathing now? How does your neutral baseline position impact you? Cool. All right, let's move on. Grab your strap again. If you're concerned about being balanced between both sides, bring the strap into the opposite hand. Bring the strap behind you. Slide it across the back of your shoulder blades and then straighten the arms in front. Fantastic. Now, draw your feet back to that initial position or Tadasana where the big toes are touching and there's about a heel, an inch distance between your heels. Great. Again, pull your strap forward like little zombies. Draw your front ribs into your back body. Your back body presses into the strap. Again, five to 10 breaths. Reach the strap forward and then up. And you might notice that the strap is sort of pulling your chest forward. So it's like broadening the upper collarbones. And you're just taking a moment to continue to draw your front ribs into your back body, lengthen your tailbone down towards the floor, find some space across your neck and your shoulders and reach out through your hands. And oh yeah, are you breathing? Fantastic. All right, go ahead and release that. Lower down and just notice what you notice happening now. How are the shoulders? How's the neck? How's the breath? Okay, let's move on. So strap is again gonna come behind you, dragging it all along the back of the body, almost like you've got a towel and you're trying to dry yourself. Keeping our feet in this orientation, we're gonna pull the strap forward and we're gonna pull the strap up and we'll notice what happens there. Now, as you take two breath cycles this time, I really want you to see if you can start to bend your knees because that's where we're going. So you're gonna start to bend your knees. You're gonna start to bend your knees. You're gonna bend your knees. You're gonna bend your knees. And we're gonna go back to that weird, crazy position we started at the very beginning of class. Oh, yay! Push your big toes down, hug your inner knees together, pull the strap forward, breathe back into your strap, and then check in with your neck. Can you relax any tension around this upper shoulders and the neck? Fantastic, you've got three. You've got two, keep breathing into your back body. You've got one. Next in breath, stand up, reach up, maybe look up. Woo, and then exhale, lower down. And then just notice what that feels like. Okay, of course I'm gonna make you do that again. Draw the strap to your other side, so opposite hand. And this time we're gonna just bend knees and pop the squat. So we're gonna do all that stuff, but we're gonna enter it from a slightly different version. So we really wanna make sure our butt is back behind us, almost like you're sticking your butt back behind you to say na 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 or whatever the heck you would do to somebody else that you're teasing and taunting. So butt's back, strap is in one hand. Now guide it back behind you, underneath your shoulder blades, keeping your knees low in your weird chair pose. Then you pull the strap forward like you're pulling on horses. You draw your front ribs back. You start to squeeze your knees together as you reach the strap forward and up. Keep sitting low in your pose. Draw the front ribs back and breathe for three. 
breathe for two, breathe for one. Inhale, stand up, reach up, look up, and then exhale, lower the strap, lower your arms. Fantastic. So I don't know about you, but that generates a lot of heat in my body. So now we're going to go ahead and build on to that. So come down to your mat. Keep your strap. Come down to your mat. Move your blanket off, your ball off. You don't need that for the time being. We're going to take both of our blocks and put them on the lowest setting, stacking them almost like a little... I don't know, making a line with them. So, sorry, Jenny, I shouldn't have said stacking them. Yes, there you go. So making a little line with them. And then you're going to take your strap and put your strap in front of your blocks. Great. Once we've got our props set up, you'll turn around so the strap is now behind you. Turn around so the strap is now behind you. Great. And you are going to lay down on the first block, but you want it to come underneath your shoulder blades. So like almost where the bottom ribs are coming in. So lay down on the blocks and just see if you can adjust it so it feels like the first block is really supporting the entire rib cage. The second block is supporting your head. And then just let your arms open out, right to left, giant T shape. Knees are bent, feet are probably planted on the floor. And you just take a moment to feel this expansion across the chest. Notice how the shoulder blades can slide down the back and that allows an opening across the top of the heart space. And you all stay there while I check to make sure blocks look like they're okay. Great. All right. Now from here, let's bring our hands down alongside our hips to grab our strap. Listen closely. Make sure your palms face up. So your strap will be on top of your hands. The back of the hands will be on the floor. Great. Grab your strap. Pull your strap wide right to left. And then as you inhale, you'll start to reach the strap along the floor up towards your head. So we're making like snow angels. There we go. And as you pull the strap, it's going to catch the block underneath you. So that should be good. And then I want you to notice, are you pulling more with your right hand or your left hand? Can you really press down into both feet and root both sit bones into the floor so you feel like you're getting a nice elongation through the spine? And you'll just take one to two more breath cycles here. And then on your next exhale, open the arms out, lower them down alongside your hips and just take a moment to pause and take a moment to breathe. Yeah, okay. Release your strap if you're still clenching it. Roll over to one of your sides and come up to sit. Okay. So some of you will stay exactly as you were on that height. Some of you will turn your blocks up to the second setting. Now, the only thing I wanted to show you for this is when we start to turn the blocks up, which is what we're going to do, when we come out of it, your hands are gonna come alongside your hips. You'll curl your chin to the chest. You'll slide the hands back and push the hands to come up. Cool. All right, so let's go ahead and lie back down. The first block, again, will be underneath the shoulder blades, really supporting the rib cage. The second block will be underneath your head. And if you find when you get there, you're like, yeah, Jessica, that's way too much. You don't have to do that. You can go back to the first setting. Uh, Steve, can you turn your blocks the other orientation or is that better for you? Yeah. Okay. And the first thing you do is just lie there. Let the arms open out. Feel the shoulder blades slide down the back. You're in this giant X or T-shaped position. Just feeling that expansion across the collarbones, across the chest. Great. Then you'll slide your hands down towards your strap, keeping the backs of the hands on the floor. Let the strap be on the palm of the hand facing up. 
And first things first, you'll just pull out right to left and then start to circle sweep the arms alongside your ears. And now if you did go up that higher setting, you are further away from the floor. So your hands might also be further away from the floor and that's okay. You'll pull equally through the right hand and the left hand. You might notice that for me, when I come up a little bit higher, my arms are more in a V shape versus like an actual I shape. And that's okay. And you just pause and you breathe and you pull on the strap. You root down through the feet, you root down through the hips. Some of you will stay here. Some of you will extend one leg long against the floor. And some of you will extend the other leg long against the floor. Now, if you did that with the arms or with the legs, the legs are active and the arms are reaching up, the feet are reaching away in opposition. And you breathe for three, flex through the feet. You breathe for two, yep. On the next exhale, arms sweep out to the side. Go ahead and bend the knees if they were straight. Release your strap. Bring your hands alongside your hips. Tuck your chin to your chest and look towards your belly button. Slide your hands back and press with your hands to come all the way up to sit. Yeah, fantastic. And then just take a moment to sit tall and see how that feels. Cool. And then we'll do our third set. So we probably know where we're going with this. You have the option to not do any of it or do one of the previous versions. The third option is to turn the blocks up to their highest setting. Now, if they go up to this highest setting, be mindful that it's a more narrow surface, so it could be a more precarious balancing position. So just keep that in a, awareness when you do that. And if we are doing that, again, same thing. First block comes between the shoulder blades. Woo. Second block supports the head and then the arms. You might notice have to come a little bit closer towards your hips because of the height of the blocks. And so you'll just find yourself in your position and you'll just take a few breaths there and just breathe and notice what it feels like first to just let the body soften and open. Great, and then when you're ready, hands come down alongside the hips, grab your strap, the backs of the palms to the floor, tops of the palms facing up. Pull the strap wide and then circle sweep the arms towards your head. And then those of us that have pretty open shoulders, I want you to pay attention to what happens if you think of driving your thumbs towards the floor. So more of an external rotation of the upper arm versus just pulling straight up and you just pay attention. And then again, same as first choice, maybe your knees stay bent and you push down into your feet. So maybe you extend one leg long on the floor beneath you and you reach up and away and you just pause and you breathe. Pause and you breathe. Fantastic. And then when you're ready, the arms will sweep out to the right and to the left. Release the strap. If the legs are straight, go ahead and bend the knees. Plant the hands alongside your hips. Draw your chin to your chest. Look towards your belly button, come up a little bit, slide the hands back, push down and come all the way up to sit. Yay. Okay, that wasn't too bad. When you're seated, just take a moment. We started seated. How tall can you sit here? And just notice if anything shifted. You're not sitting on anything, but has anything opened on the chest? Does it feel a little bit easier to sit? Great. All right, let's move on. Go ahead and remove all your props from your space. And unfortunately, there's not gonna be anything sneaky about this. So there's nothing sneaky about this. You'll then lie down on your bags. So Erica's not here to tell me this is sneaky core work. There's nothing sneaky about any of this. So just as a heads up, there is nothing sneaky about any of this part. Now, when you're on your back, go ahead and bend your knees. Allow your palms to face up. Jenny, be very mindful with this. You might choose not to do any of this. Great. And then just notice how the shoulder blades feel on the back, how the back of the hips feel on the back. Then go ahead and bring your hands underneath your sacrum, palms face down, almost like you're creating a little triangle with your index fingers and thumbs. So you're sitting on your hands. 
And you'll notice that if your hands are pretty close towards your tailbone, it sort of curves or art or rather rounds your low back just a little bit. So we wanna keep that. Now from here, reach one leg and then the other up towards the sky to create a 90 degree angle in your hips. There we go. Now from here, let's go ahead and again, activate our feet. So Barbie pointing our toes, pressing the big toes towards each other. And then notice that with the hands, you can push them down into the floor and then away from your head. And that allows you to curl your low belly in just a little bit. So we're gonna keep that, take a big breath in, take a big breath out. The next time you inhale, lower your legs halfway between here and the floor. So you're kind of at a 45 degree angle. Again, press your big toes together, draw the low belly in. On your next inhalation, lower your feet halfway between here and to the floor. I don't know my math well enough to tell you what type of angle that is. And then you'll squeeze the big toes together, hug the low belly in. On your next exhalation, lower the legs all the way down. Take a moment to rest, take a moment to breathe. Next exhale, hug the legs together, draw the low belly in and up, lift the legs about six inches, eight inches away from the floor. Again, low belly draws in and away from the, in and towards the spine. Next exhale, lift the legs back to that 45 degree angle, feet are active, big breath in. Next exhale, legs come back to perpendicular. Yay, we get to do that again. Take a big breath in. Take a big breath out. As you inhale, lower your legs halfway between here and the floor. Great, hug the legs in. Big breath in, big breath out. Next inhalation, lower halfway between there and the floor. So you're about eight inches, six inches away from the floor. Big breath in, big breath out. Lower all the way down. Take a moment to relax. Take a moment to breathe. Awesome, and then we'll go ahead and try that again. So activate the legs, draw the breath in, exhale, lift the legs about six to eight inches off the floor. Big breath in, big breath out. Next exhale, lift the legs to about 45 degrees. Big breath in, big breath out. Next exhalation, lift the legs back to perpendicular. Yay, big breath in. Big breath out, fantastic. Go ahead and release the hands, bend the knees, hug the knees into the chest. If you wanna rock the roll a little bit, you're good. If you decide not to, you're good. Great. And then we'll go ahead and gently roll to one side and come up to sit and then come up to stand. And then when you find yourself standing, Again, just see what it feels like to be hip distance apart. Sorry, I had to get a water. You might need to get a water too. And you just notice what it feels like. How is the weight transpiring down the legs, down the ankles, into the feet, into the floor? How does the back feel? How does the chest feel? How are you breathing? Cool, let's move on. Grab your block. Sorry, this is not a block. Grab your ball. Yay, okay. Now, if anything I've ever said, listen to this one closely. We wanna move super duper, super duper, super duper slowly. So we're gonna move super duper, super duper, super duper slowly. We're gonna start with our left foot, bring our left ball of the foot on the ball. Now we all hopefully have five toes and on the five toes, we have tarsals and metatarsals. You're gonna take your ball and you're gonna roll, well, we'll pretend this is my big toe, all the way down to the center of your heel and then all the way back up and you switch. All the way down to the center of your heel and then all the way back up. And just as a heads up, the slower that you move, and I mean super duper, super duper slow, the more release and impact you'll get out of this. So again, choose your own adventure, but you're pushing down and you're rolling super slow. You're noticing if you're grimacing, you're noticing if, you're, if you stopped breathing, you're noticing if your hands are clenching. I'm do a subtle clench as I'm holding onto my waist. 
Notice if your opposite knee starts to lock and see if you can keep that soft. And then when you get to the heel, oh, that's fun. You then reverse that. And I find that when I go the opposite direction, it's harder to be slow. So just notice what's working for you. I've just done my big toe. You're probably already on to your middle toe because I was talking quite a bit, but you stay with you. And we are trying to move super duper, super duper, super duper slowly. And you're applying as much pressure as appropriate for you. Yep. And then slowly come back up. I'm guessing now most of you might be at maybe your fourth toe. So again, notice what happens in the hands. I notice that there's like a, a tent attempt with my hands to try to participate, which is not helpful. Cool. So we'll pretend that we did all five toes or pretend that I did all five toes. Go ahead and release that left foot. And then I want you to just stand and notice if you notice anything different between your right side and your left side. How does the back of the leg feel? How does the front of the hip feel? How are you breathing? How are your shoulders working out? Great, all right, let's try that on the other side. So now the right foot is going to come onto your ball. And again, you're going down all five lines of your tarsals and your metatarsals. And I encourage you to move a little bit slower than you might first have the impulse to do. Again, because it just helps. Whoa, that's fun. It helps you find little nitty gritty nooks and crannies that because this is our foundation, it translates up through the rest of the body. Okay, so, ooh, that's fun. You might also get some pops in your ankle as you're going along. I'm barely at my second toe. I'm going to guess most of you are probably at your third or fourth. So we'll do about one or two more passes. And you're pausing. Oh, that's fun. And you're breathing. Ooh. Just notice how you're doing. How are you breathing? Okay. And we'll say this is our last pass. I find the pinky toe to be the most interesting one. That one's just kind of fun. It doesn't want to go. And then we'll go ahead and release. And again, just notice if you notice anything different between the two sides. Cool. All right. We're going to step on the ball one more time. This time, we're going to trace the ball slowly across the top of your foot. It'll come to the outside. It'll go underneath back towards the big toe and then you'll reverse that. So let's go ahead and start with our left foot. And just put your left foot on the ball and you, it's almost like you've got a high heel on. So you're really, your heel is lifted and you're just slowly rolling from your big toe across to your pinky toe and you're applying as much weight as is appropriate for you, then sliding out towards the pinky toe underneath the ball of your foot. Woohoo, that's fun. Going back towards your big toe. And then you reverse that. We're going back towards the pinky toe. Then out on the outer side, up towards the top of the ball of the foot, and then back towards your big toe. And once you make it back to your big toe, slide the ball down. So it's now in the front of your heel and just lightly press into the ball. And you might move your foot around a little bit. You might not, but just find a little bit of mm, space across the ball of your foot. And then go ahead and release that and just notice what you notice. You might even look down at your feet and notice there's suddenly different colors as well. So that's fun. And then let's try the other side. So again, right foot comes onto the ball, lifting the heel, and you're traveling across the top of the ball of the foot. Ah, this looks fun. Um, finding the ball and then going to the outside edge. 
and then underneath. So Jenny, we are traveling across the ball of the foot, the upper and lower part. And again, moving super duper, super duper slowly, going back towards the pinky toe, and then up the outer edge, and then over towards the big toe. And then once you get there, slide the ball back. So now it's in the front of your heel. And again, lightly press into the ball. You might move the foot or the knee around just a little bit to get a little bit, Ooh, that's fun, space in the front of the calcaneus. Cool. All right, and then go ahead and release that. And I want you to just stand and see how that feels. And then before you take a little walk, I want you to take one of your feet back and do a little mini toe squat and just stretching the front and the back of the foot and feel how that feels. And then take a little walk around and notice if you notice anything different, if it feels easier to walk around. Cool. And then you're gonna walk back to your mat and you're gonna sit down. Let's go ahead and grab our blanket and unfold our blanket. <clears throat> And then you're going to grab both of your blocks. OK, so blocks we'll put towards the upper outer corners of our space, wherever we're facing, blankets underneath our knees. And then we're going to come forward on to hands and knees. And make sure that blanket is supporting as much of your shins as is needed for you. Start with your left leg. And you're going to bring your left leg onto the back of your right leg. And we haven't done this in a while, but you all are experts at this. You're just going to drag the shin bone up and down to create a little bit of friction, a little bit of heat, a little bit of opening. And then, of course, you'll go right to left, like you're playing a violin or sawing a piece of bread or a piece of wood. Okay, and the part that's different for today is I want you to bring your left calf to the back of your right calf underneath the bulbous part where your gastric anemius ends. So that big, beautiful, bulby part that we all have Put your left shin right there. And then once you've done that, here's our giant warning. This isn't going to be fun. You're going to push your butt back. Now, once you go there, you might be like, yeah, Jessica, this is way too much. That's why your blocks are here. You might bring your hands onto your blocks because it just helps lift some of the weight away from the floor. And then you just pause and you breathe. And you've got one shin pressing into the back of the other calf. And so that probably doesn't feel so good. So make sure you're breathing. Make sure you're breathing. Yeah. All right. And then you come forward. You release your left knee. You extend your right toes back. And you just find the nice little calf stretch there. That feels pretty nice. And then we try the other side. So now your right shin comes to the back of your left calf. And again, you drag the leg up and down, up and down. And then you start to go right to left, finding that little sawing action. And I noticed that on one of my legs, it's a little bit more tender than the other, and you might be having that experience too. So if you are, great. If not, great, that's all good. And then we'll pause and we'll bring the right shin right underneath our gastric anemius on the left side. You pin it there and then start to walk your hands back and you pause and you breathe and you pause and you breathe. And again, your blocks are there. If this feels like a lot of pressure and you're like, yeah, Jessica, I don't want to do that. And then you notice if you're breathing. Great. And let's go ahead and come out. Extend the left leg back, curl the toes under. Cool. And then lower your left knee down. Curl both sets of toes under, and then start to push your butt just a little bit back for toe squats. We're not going to go the whole way today. I just want you to feel the soles of your feet opening up. And 
what can help with that is if it feels like you're pushing your hands down and forward, you're reaching your butt back and your big toes with about an inch worth of space between your heels are finding that nice stretch. Great, okay. Come forward, extend the tops of the feet onto the floor and then shift your weight back. And if you'd like, maybe lifting one end or both knees up and away from the floor. You just pause and you breathe. Then you pause and you breathe. Cool. All right, let's come forward. We get to do that calf smashing thing one more time. So this time we're just gonna go straight into it. So the left calf comes to the left shin, comes to the back of the right calf, right where the gastric anemius is. And then you'll start to sit your pelvis back. Blocks come with you if needed. Now this time we're gonna think of rocking forward and rocking back a little bit. And you notice that as you do that, you really push that left shin bone. Ha <laughs> ha, ooh, that's fun. Into the back of your right calf. And are you breathing as you're doing that? And some of you will be happy with that motion. Some of you will wanna try a little right to left motion. So it almost feels like you're shimming or shaking your, or shifting your hips. Those are all fun S words. A little bit from right to left. Nice job. All right, and then we'll come forward, extend the right leg back. Nice little stretch of the calf. And then we'll try the other side. So again, right shin comes into the belly of the left calf where that gastroc meets the soleus. And then you sit your butt back and you might stay completely here. You might rock a little forward. Oh, that's fun. And back. For me, it feels like it's... Um, what is the word? It feels like it's shearing, but not in a bad way. My, my muscle, it's separating them a little bit. Or you might go right to left. And you choose what option you want to take. Maybe you try them both. Maybe try neither. Okay. And let's go ahead and come to stillness. Shift the weight forward. Now, this time, I want you to find your first downward facing dog of the day. Hooray for you. But we're going to take a wide-legged downward facing dog. So separate your knees a little bit wider than you normally would. Curl both sets of toes under. Sift your tuchus up and back. And today, because we spent so much time working on your feet and ankles, I want you to see if you can reach your heels down and towards the floor as you push your hands down and towards the floor. As you draw your thighs back and away from your abdomen. As you lift your head away from the floor, along ears alongside your arms, and just pause and you breathe. And you just pause and you breathe. And my people that were experiencing back pain, I want you to notice how this feels to really just root into the hands, really root into the feet and find that space in the spine. Yeah, nice work. All right, on your next in-breath, go ahead and lower the knees to the mat and come up to sit. Cool. This one's gonna be weird. I'm already gonna tell you that, so that's fine. We're gonna fold our blanket back up. Um, I would encourage you to fold it this long way about four times, just because this is going to pad our knees. And then it, it will come in the middle of our mat and both of our blocks will come to the top of our mat on the lowest setting, shoulder distance apart. So flip the blocks all the way down on lowest setting. Great. Are we all there? Okay. Now, with your knees on your blanket, you're going to put your hands on your blocks. Knees on your blankets, hands on your blocks. All right, and I want you to just take a few cats and cows here to get accustomed to having this weird orientation to gravity. Awesome. On your next inhale, go ahead and find yourself in a neutral spine. Cool. Some of you will need to step your left block forward about five to six inches. You're then going to put your left foot on your left block. Left foot, left block. Yay! Okay, curl your right toes under. 
Yay, cool. Now from here, start to walk your spine up to vertical. Let me pause and change the camera. You stay right there. Okay, so now that we're here, I want you to push down into your back knee. That's your right knee. Pull your right knee forward towards the top of your space, but draw the top of your right hip back. Top of right thigh back. Right knee goes forward, but top of right thigh goes back. Now squeeze your right butt cheek for dear life. Push down into your left foot so you feel your heel. Push down into the block and you feel your underbutt on the left side engage. Some of you will stay here and just scoop your low belly in and up as you keep squeezing that right butt cheek. Some of you will reach your right arm up and alongside your ears. Other right arm, there we go. Take a big breath in and then maybe keep squeezing that right butt cheek. Isometrically pull your right knee to the right as you reach up and over with your right hand towards the left. And you just pause and you breathe and you squeeze your right butt cheek a lot. You draw your right knee forward, the top of the right thigh back. Push down into your left foot. Soften the shoulders and the chest. Ooh, that's fun. And then inhale, come back up. As you exhale, lower the hand back down to the block. Shift your weight back, draw your left leg back, draw the left block back. Let me turn this way. Cool. And then we'll try all that again. So we're going to take our right block, and you might need to slide your right block forward about four to five inches. Then step your right foot onto your right block. Yay. Curl your left toes under. Fantastic. Now, Push down into the support beneath you to bring your spine up to vertical. First things first, push down in your left knee. Pull your left knee forward, but draw the top of your left thigh back. So left knee is isometrically pulling forward, but top of left thigh is drawing back. Now squeeze your left butt cheek a lot. Scoop your low belly up, and you might stay here happy as a clam. Push down into your right foot, or you might reach your left arm up again. Keep pulling your left knee isometrically to the right as you reach up and maybe over towards your right. Keep drawing the right knee, sorry, left knee forward and to the right. Keep squeezing your left glutes. Soften any tension around your shoulders and you breathe. <sighs> On the next inhale, gently come up. Lower the hand back down to the block, left hand to block. Remove the right foot from the block and step your hands back so they're underneath your shoulders. And then just take a cat and a cow there, hands on blocks, and just notice what that feels like. <laughs> cool. All right, the next time you inhale, go ahead and come to a neutral spine. This is going to sound confusing, so please just listen closely. Walk your blocks closer to the blanket. Cool. Now, whatever way you want to, you're going to turn around and face the other direction. Whatever way you want to, you're going to turn around and face the other direction. And then you're going to put your knees on the blocks. Yeah. Fantastic. So when your knees are on the blocks, curl both sets of toes under. And now we're in this weird tabletop in a different orientation. Take a couple cats and cows here, just so you can sort of be like, okay, I got this. I know what's going on. Something somewhat familiar. Cool. And then on your next in-breath, come to a neutral spine. Now, same thing that we did before. You are going to step your left hand forward a couple of inches. Then step your left foot where your left hand is. Now you might feel like, okay, Jessica, I need to wiggle walk my left foot forward a little bit more. And if that's the case for you, by all means, you do that. Keep your right toes curled under, push down into your front foot, that's your left foot, and then walk your hands up the center of your front thigh. Cool. Now, pay attention to your back leg, that's your right knee. Push your right knee down, drag your right knee forward. Draw the top of your right thigh back. 
Squeeze your right butt cheek. Scoop your low belly in and up and then push both hands down into your front thigh. You might stay there or reach both arms up and over your head. Now keep pulling your right knee forward and isometrically pull it a little bit to the left as you push into your left foot. You scoop your left or your whole low belly. You squeeze your right glutes and maybe you look up. Yeah. All right, gently release. Hands come back to the floor. Step your front foot back to meet its mate. Both knees on blocks. If you want to take a cat and a cow, great. If not, great. And then we'll go ahead and try all that on the other side. So let's step our right hand forward a couple of inches and then step our right foot where our right hand was. If you need to wiggle walk your front foot forward, by all means do that. Curl the back toes under. Start to push down into the front foot and back knee and bring your spine up to vertical. Now, same thing we did before. So you're gonna again, push down into your left knee isometrically pull it forward and draw the top of your left thigh back. Squeeze your outer left hip and then scoop your whole low belly up by pushing down a little bit more through your arms. Happy to stay here, just rooting into your front foot or you might reach both arms up and overhead. And if you do that, great, keep the activation in the legs. So. Your left knee is drawing forward and slightly to the left. You're squeezing your left glute as the top of the left thigh goes back. You're pushing into the right foot and you're breathing. All right, next exhale, go ahead and lower the hands down. This time you're gonna go directly to downward facing dog, normal orientation, and just experience what that feels like. Heels reach towards the floor, hands push down and back, thighs reach back behind you. Yay. Okay. Lower your knees to the mat. Move your props and find your way onto your backs. How did that go? Was that okay? Did we find fun stuff happening on the front of our quads? Quads. Okay, good. And when you find yourself on your back, we want to make sure our strap is somewhere nearby. Cool. And so this one is going to be particularly important for my people saying that they had lots of low back stuff going on. Keep both of your knees bent. Draw your right knee into your chest. And then put the strap across the ball of your right foot. And actually, based upon what I'm seeing, let's take a quick detour. Everybody take the strap off your foot and put both feet back on the floor. I want you to take a few pelvic rocks here, forward and back. So your butt stays on the floor pretty much the whole time and you're just rocking forward and back, little pelvic anterior um, notations here just to find neutral and then after you've gone forward and back a few times go ahead and come to a neutral spot where it feels like your two top hip bones and your pubic bone are equally parallel to the ceiling great keep that now draw your right knee into your chest put the strap across the ball of your right foot and then reach your right foot up towards the sky and we want to keep um, both hands holding on to the strap. So one end of the strap in each hand. Great. And as best as possible, we're going for a 90 degree angle. So I don't want your leg closer to you than 90 degrees, just 90 degrees. So the leg will come away from you just a little bit. Yeah. Now, as you pull down with the strap, really press the ball of your foot up into the strap. And then notice that you can reach your heel up as well and start to tone all the muscles around that right leg. Now check in with your pelvis again. See if you can arch your low back just a little bit so your two hip bones and pubic bones are equally parallel to the ceiling. Some of you will stay right here. Some of you will reach your left leg long against the floor. 
Now, if the left leg goes long, I want you to bring your awareness to the back of your left leg. Can you get the top of your left thigh to go back and down towards the floor. Your right leg may have to come a little bit away from you in order to make that happen. You might need to arch your back a little bit more. Oh, good job, guys. This looks fantastic. Okay, and then you're gonna keep pushing up through the, the ball of the foot, keep pulling down through the strap, and then notice if you stopped breathing. Draw your outer right hip slightly away from your right shoulder. Yeah, awesome. Without moving the leg, release the strap. Nice work. Okay, if the left leg is straight, bend the knee, plant the left foot on the floor, then bend the right leg and put the right foot next to the left. Take a moment to just notice if you notice anything different between your right side and your left side. Oh, I got a thumbs up. Thanks, Steve. And then we'll try all that on the other side. So you might want to try those pelvic mutations first because that's really key to making sure that when you start extending your legs, you're coming from your neutral spine. And then when you're ready, the left knee will come to the chest, draw the strap across the ball of the left foot and send your left foot up towards the sky. Great. Pause here. Okay, pull down equally with right hand and left hand. Really press the ball of your foot up and curl the toes down towards your face. As you're doing all that, you have to tone the muscles around the left leg so it stays active. And then reach your left heel up a smidge more. Awesome sauce. Then check in with the top of your pelvis. Are the two hip bones and the pubic bone parallel to the ceiling? And if so, great. You might stay here or you might choose to extend your opposite leg. So your right leg long against the floor beneath you. Now, if that right leg does go long, draw the top of the right thigh down to the floor. So the back of the right hamstring can come to the floor. And you just pause and you breathe. Yeah, that looks nice, guys. And then slightly draw outer left hip away from left shoulder just a smidge. Yep. And you just pause and you breathe and you pause and you breathe. And we're still at a perpendicular, so that leg's not coming too close to us. Cool. Now, without changing anything, just release the strap. If the right leg was straight, bend the right knee, plant the right foot on the floor. Then bend the left knee and put the left foot on the floor. And then just take a moment to pause and breathe and notice what you notice. How's the right side? How's the left side? How's the back of your body specifically? What do you notice in the shoulders and the hips and the low back? Cool. And then we'll try all that again. So this time, draw the right knee to the chest. Draw the strap across the ball of your right foot. and then send the right foot up towards the sky. So we're gonna do it where you have the option of staying perpendicular, which is what we did the first time. So you're gonna pull down with the strap, press the ball of the foot into the strap like the, the accelerator, reach the heel up, hug all the muscles around the bone, check in with your pelvis, make sure that's neutral, and then maybe extend your left leg long. If that left leg has gone long and you feel that you have the capacity to go a little bit further, you might start to draw your right leg closer to your chest. But you'll notice if you've gone too far because the top of your left thigh will inch away from the floor. You'll feel a gap there. So you only draw the right leg as close to you as the top of the left thigh can keep rooting down and back behind you. And then you pause and you breathe. You notice if you're grimacing around your mouth or clutching that strap for dear life. And where can you soften around the shoulders, the chest, and the heart? Fantastic. Let's gently come out of this. So release the strap, but keep the legs. Bend the left knee if it was straight. Plant the left foot on the floor. And bend the right knee and plant the right foot next to it. Notice if you notice anything between the sides. And then when you're ready, you'll try the opposite side. So we can always just stay 
and perpendicular. That actually does a lot of reparative work for our low back, just being at that perpendicular angle. And some of us have pretty open hamstrings and like the additional challenge. So if you do start to draw your left thigh closer to you, you make sure that the top of the right thigh continues to reach towards the floor. And to make that happen, actually, you have to make sure that your pelvis stays neutral. So top two hip bones, pubic bones stay neutral um, in relationship or parallel to the sky. And you just pause and you breathe and you pause and you breathe. We've got about two more breath cycles here. And then when you're ready, you release the strap. If the right leg is straight, bend the right knee, plant the right foot on the floor, then bend the left knee, plant the foot on the floor. Cool. Go ahead and discard that strap. You don't need it for the time being. And then with your feet hip distance apart, reach your right foot up towards the sky, cross your right thigh over your left leg, maybe wrap your right toes underneath the back of your left ankle, then push down into your left foot, lift your pelvis up and slide it to the right and put your butt back down. And then let your legs fall over to the left for Garudasana twist. Once your legs start to go over to the left, you might need to push down into the back of your head, push down into your left elbow, and then lift your left rib cage, slide it to the left and put it back down so that maybe more of your right chest can come onto the floor. And you just take a few breaths to breathe here in this twist. So we've got an outer hip uh, Garudasana twist, Steve. You've got an outer hip stretch happening as you squeeze your outer knees towards each other. And then you've got a twist happening in the back. And you just pause and you breathe across the belly. And you just notice how that feels. And then on your next in breath, gently come back up through center. Unwind the legs, re-square the pelvis underneath the shoulders back into center. And just notice if you notice anything. How does the right side feel in comparison to the left? And then we'll try that on the other side. So extend your left leg up, cross your left thigh over your right thigh, maybe hook your left toes behind the back of your right calf, then push down into your right foot, lift your bum up, slide your butt to the left, put your butt back down, and then allow the legs to fall over to the right. Once the legs get to the right, you might push down into your right elbow and into your skull, lift your right shoulder up, slide it to the right, and notice if that allows more of your left shoulder and chest to come towards the floor. And you pause and you breathe. Nice job. On your next in breath, gently come back up through center, unwind the legs, re-square the hips underneath the shoulders. Very last thing here, once your feet are hip distance apart, bring your hands alongside your hips, turn your palms to face up, notice how the backs of the shoulder blades feel. And when you're ready, push down through your feet, lift your hips. You might roll one shoulder underneath you a little bit more and then the other. You might grab the outer edges of your mat or interlace your hands, but you've got a few breath cycles in Setu Bandha Sarvangasana, so bridge pose. And you just pause and you breathe and you notice what it feels like to push down into your heels and draw the knees forward just a smidge. And you do that by pushing down into the heels and almost feeling like you're pulling the soles of the feet back and then the knees will naturally go forward. And then when you are ready to come down, you unclasp the hands, untuck the shoulders, bring the bum back down. When your butt touches the floor, widen your feet outside of your hips, let your knees knock in towards each other and then wrap your arms around your torso for constructive rest. And you just take three to five breaths here.
You just notice. On your next in breath, notice which arm is on top. And then you'll switch sides, opening the arms out and then crossing the other arm on top. Now for today, I'm only gonna give three options. So option number one is to stay right here and this is where you'll do Shavasana. Option number two is to do Supta Baddha Konasana, soles of the feet together, knees supported by blocks. Option number three is traditional Shavasana. So you choose one of those three options and make your way there. Yep. Great. And if you're finding that your space is cold or you need to cover up, by all means do that. And then when you find yourself in your final shape, I want you to bring your awareness to something that we all fortunately don't really have to pay attention to. Well, there are a couple of things we don't really have to pay attention to, but gravity is the one and your breath is the other. So, with every breath in, I want you to notice how space is created in the body. And with every breath out, I want you to notice how gravity draws down, it supports, it takes on that which we no longer need to carry. I think in many respects for us to find our baseline, whether we're hikers or not, or just humans living we need to know what we can let go of and we need to create space for what we can allow. And so every inhalation is reminding you that there is space to be had. There's a newness to be experienced. And every exhale is reminding you that you can soften, you can let go, you can put down some things. And so as you're here with you for the next few moments, I encourage you to just continue to stay with the breath, inhaling, noticing how space is created, and exhaling, softening, releasing, melting, whatever you choose or do not need to carry any longer. I'll leave you here with you and your breath, and I'll let you know when it's time to come out.
Return your awareness to your breath. As you come back to your breath, just take a moment to check in. If there's any part of you longing to linger in this shape, by all means, please stay here. When movement or life do start to call you, allow your breath to deepen. And then allow movement to gently re-enter your physical form. Again, those in stillness, stay as long as you like. Those in movement, you might start to make your way to one of your sides. When you find yourself on your side, just pause there for a couple breaths. And then gently start to roll over and come up to sit. When you find yourself vertical, just take a moment to sit tall. Maybe you soften your gaze or close your eyes. Take a moment to notice if you need to roll the shoulders a little bit or move the neck. Soften any tension around the mouth and the eyes. And you'll just take three breath cycles here. What does your baseline feel like? What does it take for you to notice when you've gotten out of alignment? Our practice, I think, is a a giant gift that we have all been given and that we give to ourselves every time we engage with it. It allows us to hone in on what is important, on who we are at our essence. And so as we complete our practice today, I'd like you to set both a little intention as well as a prayer of gratitude to yourself for coming to your space and coming to your mat today. Let's bring our hands to heart center, Anjali Mudra. Press the palms into each other. Receive the weight of your thumbs into your sternum and then lightly press your sternum into your thumbs. Exhale all the breath from your mouth. Take a big breath in, audible breath out. Inhale for OM, join if you'd like. Draw your thumbs to your forehead. May our thoughts be clear. Draw your thumbs to your lips. May our words be kind. And draw your thumbs to your heart center. May our hearts be open. The light, the breath, the baseline within me honors and salutes. The light, the breath, and the baseline within each of you. Namaste. Namaste.